This Mac OS flaw can bypass security protections, Russia accuses the US of hacking iPhones, and Amazon is hit with a fine for privacy violations. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for June 6, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. We've got a whole bunch of news about a vulnerability in Apple's Mac OS that could have some serious consequences. Microsoft researchers recently discovered a flaw, which is codenamed Migraine, which allows attackers with root privileges to bypass the System Integrity Protection, or SIP, and gain access to a victim's private data. Now this vulnerability, which is tracked as CVE 2023-32369, has been reported to Apple and since has been patched in the latest macOS security updates, which were pushed on May 18th. Now let's talk about SIP for a moment. Now system integrity protection is a security mechanism in macOS that limits the root user's ability to modify protected files and folders. It's designed to ensure that only trusted processes like Apple signed software updates can make changes to critical components. However, the researchers found a way for attackers with root access to bypass SIP by exploiting the macOS Migration Assistant utility. This utility, which is a built-in app, has this very special entitlement called com.apple.rootless.install.heritable that allows it to bypass SIP checks. By automating the migration process using AppleScript, attackers could add a malicious payload to SIP's exclusions list without needing to restart the system or boot from macOS recovery. So that means that the malware could execute arbitrary code and bypass SIP's protective measures. The implications here of such a bypass are quite serious. Attackers could create SIP-protected malware that cannot be easily removed. They could expand the attack surface, they could tamper with system integrity through kernel code execution, and potentially install rootkits to hide their malicious activities from security software. In addition to compromising SIP, this vulnerability also enables attackers to bypass transparency, consent, and control, which is TCC for short, policies. By replacing TCC databases, they could gain unrestricted access to a victim's private data. Now, this is not the first time that Microsoft researchers have uncovered macOS vulnerabilities. It's happened before. In 2021, they found an SIP bypass called Shrootless. Not shirtless. I originally read it as shirtless. No, it's shrootless. Allowing attackers to perform arbitrary operations, escalate privileges, and potentially install rootkits on compromised Macs. They also discovered the Achilles flaw, which enables malware deployment through untrusted application, bypassing gatekeeper execution restrictions. And we can also not forget about Power DIR, which was another macOS bug that allows attackers to bypass TCC and access protected user data. Now, thankfully, Apple has addressed this latest vulnerability and released security updates for macOS Ventura 13.4, macOS Monterey 12.6.6, and macOS Big Sur 11.7.7. So if you are a macOS user, just make sure you update your system to stay protected. The Russian Federal Security Service, or the FSB for short, has alleged that U.S. state-sponsored attackers have targeted and hacked thousands of iOS devices. Russian cybersecurity firm Kaspersky has reported that iPhones on its own network were hacked using an iOS vulnerability that exploited iMessage zero-click attacks. These attacks deliver a message that triggers code execution without any user interaction. The payload is then downloaded from the attacker's server while the message and the attachment are wiped from the device. The downloaded payload runs with root privileges, collecting system and user info, and executing commands sent by the attackers. Now, Kaspersky has named this ongoing campaign Operation Triangulation, and they are urging anyone with more information to come forward. They have analyzed the malware by creating file system backups of infected iPhones using the free on GitHub mobile verification toolkit. The analysis revealed signs of infection as early as 2019, according to Kaspersky, with the most recent infected iOS version being 15.7. Now, it's worth noting 
saying that the latest iOS release, which was version 16.5, may have already fixed the vulnerability used in these attacks. The iMessage exploit triggers an unknown vulnerability in iOS, allowing code execution and fetching subsequent stages from the attacker's server, including that privilege escalation of exploits. Kaspersky has provided a list of 15 different domains associated with this malicious activity on their own blog, which security admins can use to check historical DNS logs for signs of exploitation. So after escalating privileges, the malware then downloads a fully featured tool set that collects system and user info, as well as additional modules from the command and control hacker owned server. It's important to note that the APT tool set dropped on the device does not have persistent mechanisms, meaning that a reboot would effectively stop it. In a statement coinciding with Kaspersky's report, Russia's FSB intelligence and security agency has accused Apple of deliberately providing the NSA with a backdoor that can be used to infect iPhones in Russia with spyware. The FSB claims to have found malware infections on iPhones belonging to Russian officials, as well as staff from the embassies of Israel, China, and NATO member nations in Russia. However, the FSB has provided absolutely no proof proof to support these allegations. Kaspersky confirmed that the attack impacted its headquarters office, which is in Moscow, and employees in other countries, but they cannot verify a link between their findings and the FSB's report as they lack technical details of the government's investigation. But Russia's CERT, C-E-R-T, released an alert linking the FSB's statement to Kaspersky's report. Biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores and their fur babies for making this show possible since we do not have ads on the show at all, except for this Patreon read. And a big thank you to TechMedic76, Jorg, Dennis, and Andreas for being a part of the s'mores over at patreon.com slash Shannon Morris. That is my new Patreon page for this show where I will be posting all the perks for patrons, including early access to this very video. If you are currently a patron on the ThreatWire page, you can switch over anytime to the new page so you don't lose access to your perks. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story. It's all about Amazon. Amazon is gonna be paying some hefty fines related to security and privacy violations involving their Ring video doorbell in the Alexa virtual assistant services. The Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, has accused Amazon's Ring's home security camera subsidiary of engaging in unlawful surveillance of customers and failing to prevent hackers from gaining control of users' cameras. As a result, Amazon will pay 30 million USD in fines to settle these allegations. So according to the proposed order, which I have screenshotted here, Ring will have to pay $5.8 million in refunds to consumers and will be prohibited from profiting from unlawfully obtained consumer videos. The complaint states that Ring compromised customers' privacy by giving employees and contractors access access to private videos. It also failed to implement basic privacy and security measures, allowing attackers to breach accounts and gain control of consumers' cameras and videos. The FTC's complaint reveals that prior to September of 2017, Ring gave full access to every customer video to every employee and hundreds of third-party contractors, even if they did not need the access to perform their functions of job. There was also this instance where an employee of Amazon viewed thousands of video recordings of female users in private spaces without detection by the company's security team. Another employee eventually discovered the issue and reported it. Hmm. Furthermore, yes, there's more. Ring failed to implement safeguards like multi-factor authentication or MFA until 2019, despite many credential stuffing attacks happening that targeted its customers in 2017 and 2018, of which Amazon was aware of. In a separate case, Amazon was also charged with violating children's privacy laws by the FTC and the US Department of Justice. They failed to delete children's voice recordings and geolocation information upon their parents' requests. Under the proposed order, Amazon will pay 25 million in fines and will be required to delete the children's data per their parents' requests. Amazon will also be prohibited from using children's data to train its algorithms, and they must delete inactive child accounts along with any linked voice recordings and geolocation data as well. Whew, that's a lot of information 
inspection and a lot of violations from Amazon. <laughs> I'm Shannon Morris. Stay vigilant, stay secure, and I will see you on the internet.